Hi, this is Deborah McLeod with Marriage SOS. If you're facing a marriage crisis, don't panic. Keep thinking and watch this video. How to stop obsessing over your husband's affair. If your husband has been or is being unfaithful, or if he's showing less love and commitment to you than he used to, it's very likely that you've heard words along these lines come out of your own mouth. I can't stop thinking about his affair. I can't stop picturing him with the other woman. I can't stop obsessing over the details of the affair. Now, to be honest, some amount of obsessing in the aftermath of a partner's affair or other marriage-shattering behavior is natural. It's even helpful. When something is upsetting, emotionally and life-wise, of course we're going to spend a disproportionate amount of our days and nights thinking about it. That's how we as human beings work through things. We think about it. We analyze the problem. We try to understand it. We try to solve it. But unfortunately, that isn't always a linear process. And too often people get stuck in that obsessive stage. The disproportionate amount of time they spend thinking about their spouse's affair or analyzing their marriage problem, it continues for weeks or months and it shows no signs of letting up or progressing. They just sit and think and think and think, spinning their wheels but getting nowhere. And when that happens, the other areas of a person's life can be impacted. Their work or career may suffer. The relationships they have with other people can suffer too. Their kids may not get as much of their attention as they need. Or their friends may, to put it bluntly, get sick and tired of talking about the same thing all the time and begin to pull away. As bad, getting stuck in that place of obsessive or overanalyzing thoughts, it can fill one's mind to the point of eclipsing the kind of open-minded, clear-headed thinking that one needs to do to actually solve their marriage problem. Talk about self-sabotaging behavior. So, if your husband has had an affair or still having one, it's easy to spiral into self-sabotaging storm of obsessive thoughts and overanalyzing. But you can calm the storm. You have the power. There's a lot of advice out there on how to deal with obsessive or overanalyzing thoughts. Things like distract yourself to disrupt the thought process, redirect your thoughts, practice self-care, meditate, keep a journal, let the thoughts flow in and through and out of you, Talk it out. Know your triggers and avoid them. Exercise. All of that stuff is good and all of that stuff can work. But I think it's important to start at the beginning or to go back to the beginning and ask yourself the question, am I handling his affair the right way? That is, are you confident that you're doing what you should be doing to manage your partner's unfaithful behavior in a way that is most likely to A, preserve your well-being and dignity, and B, ensure that your spouse ends their affair and recommits to you with increased maturity, respect, and devotion. While obsessive or overanalyzing thoughts can be a problem unto themselves, I have definitely seen cases where a spouse is stuck in that place because they aren't clear or confident in regards to how they should be handling their spouse's affair or their spouse's unfaithful, untrustworthy, or uncooperative behavior. And because they lack clarity, because they lack certainty, they can't ever quite relax. They can't just let out a deep breath, sit back and say, okay, I know that I've done all that I can do. I know that I'm doing things the right way. Now I can stop obsessing because now the ball is in my partner's court. So by all means, if you find yourself stuck and spinning your wheels and obsessive thoughts, use those tips. Disrupt the thought process, exercise, Talk to a pro if you need to, but do be sure that you start at the beginning. The first step is to ensure that you're managing your spouse's affair, past or ongoing, in the way that is right for you. The second step is to learn how to manage yourself. But again, that's something you will likely find much easier to do once that first step has been taken. But how do you know whether you're handling your spouse's affair the right way? Well, that's another matter altogether. I offer specialized online crash courses that can help, so you may want to look at those. And if they aren't right for you, keep looking until you find the resource that is. You have options. What you don't have is time to obsess over something. Your time, your life, is far too valuable for that. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for marriage saving resources that you can use right now and that target your specific marriage crisis, visit marriagesos.com.